Hi everyone, today I'm going to be colouring in this um, house. This is from um, Johanna Basford's Worlds of Wonder and it's um, the page with lots and lots of different houses on. And I've seen lots of people colouring in these in different ways and I thought I would just show you my way and then it might just get you started perhaps on this page. Um, I have done one of them already I think. No, I haven't actually. There's one on the inside flap of the book that I've done and actually it's from a different page so I haven't done any from this page. But I'm going to start with the roof. Now I'm using my Stedler Ergosoft pencils today Sorry, the page keeps moving. It's uh, it's being a bit annoying. So this is the dark grey um, colour. They obviously only have these numbers. Um, you can use the lighter grey or black if you haven't got this um, set. Now for the roof tiles, I do them in exactly the same way, oddly, as I do fish scales. So I do a harder layer of colour at the top and then lighter to the edge and almost leave a white piece. And the idea behind that, I think... I'm pretty sure Johanna Basswood colours them in the same way when I watch her videos. The idea is that the light is catching the front of the tile, but the part up here is in shadow from the tile above. So it just gives it a little more of a more realistic feel to it. Obviously, we're never going to make this house look like, well, I have seen some amazing people, I have to say, but I'm never going to make this house look like it's like real, like a photograph. But yeah, as I say, there are some amazing pieces of work. I actually think it's quite important to be very careful when you're looking on Instagram, Pinterest, even Facebook or Johanna's Gallery at other people's pieces of work. It can be quite make you feel quite low sometimes if you see this absolutely amazing thing and you think I'm never going to do that. Now I do that too. I look at that I think wow there's no way I'm going to do that and then I have a look and I try and work out how they've done it. So the ones that impress me the most are watercolour painted. Now watercolour is not my thing. It's not something that I'm interested in learning at the moment, not to say I won't in the future. And therefore, I'm just doing these really dark, these little bits, because I think they'd be shaded. And therefore, um, I'm going to do this roof in exactly the same way. So therefore, I know that I'm never going to achieve the look that they've achieved. So I just have to admire from afar, essentially, and think, that's amazing. It's not something I'm going to achieve with my coloured pencils. But... If you see a really fantastic piece that has been done in pencil, then you can learn. You can take a look at it and think about what is it that I like? What is it their choice of colour? Because that's easy. I can do that. Is it their um, particular use of light and shade? Can I learn how to do that? Um, is it just how they put it all together? Yeah, I could probably work out how to do that. Is it some creativity that they've got that I haven't? That's okay. We're not all the same. And actually, you can copy their picture. Um, obviously, um, if you're copying someone's picture and you're just keeping it for yourself in your book, do it. doesn't matter. If you're copying someone's picture and you're posting it on any sort of Facebook group, Instagram, anywhere credit the person just say inspired by blah and tag them if you can because that's just courteous you know it's nice for them to also know that you they've inspired you and you know it's just a nice thing to do the coloring community is lovely we uh, respect each other and uh, that's just the way that people do things here so uh, that's nice but as i say if you can't remember who's inspired you to tag i just don't like these top ones are not dark enough i'm going back over them um just keep it to yourself show your friends and family you know but it's not like we're allowed to sell our work so we're not you know creating some sort of copy fake and selling it you know but uh, as i say if you're posting it it's always courteous to tag the person same as if you do a tutorial to be honest I don't mind that much I do see pictures and I think that looks like mine but and I'm not tagged and I think oh well they've probably forgotten or they might have just seen it it might have stuck and they might have got no idea that uh, they've copied me and I find it really flattering anyway that someone does something like me but it it uh, other people don't like it so it's just uh, 
as I say, it's just courtesy to just tag or mention a name, you know. So there we go. So the roof, as you can see, is done. It's quite simple. Now, if it was bigger, I would probably go in with several shades of grey and, uh, you know, and dark and light. And I might get my a blending pencil and try and blend it, maybe get some more white on the edge there, that sort of thing, you know, with a white pencil. But it's small and it's simple and it's effective. It's done. So the pieces um, on the roof these pieces across and up here. I'm going to go in with my lighter grey. You could use the same colour or you could use a black. Um, this is number 80 by the way if you are colouring exactly along. And what I'm going to do here is quite simple again, just a bit harder there and lighter towards the middle. Sorry, bear with me. Oh, sorry, something on my finger. I think it's from my desk. My desk has got a leather top and uh, sometimes I catch my fingernails in the leather and skag a bit, which isn't good, I know, but uh, it's an old desk and the leather needs replacing and it hasn't been, so it's okay. The uh, The leather isn't, an, isn't this can easily be replaced, so I gather. I just haven't done it. I know someone who will do it as well, but I just, yeah, just haven't got around to it. Now here, as well. This looks like it would be a sort of metally bit. I don't know about you, I think this looks a bit like a church. I don't know whether Johanna had particular places in mind. Now the windows I'm going to do next and I'm going to do them yellow as if there's light shining out of them. I'm going to take it a little step further. Off, You can just do one shade of yellow and that looks quite pretty but I'm going to do a slightly shaded window just to show you a different way of doing it. So number 42 is the sort of lightest orange and I'm just going to go around the edge of each window with this first. This is on the inside of the window. I'm sure you can see how I've started. And um, the reason for that is just to, and then I'm going to go in with the yellow after and it, hopefully it just give it a slightly more interesting glow to the window. We'll see if it works, won't we? Now I would shade it out a bit into the centre because we've got like a harsh line because it's such a small space I'm hoping we can get away with it and it won't really notice we'll find out won't we so the yellow I'm using is the darkest yellow in the tin which is the number 11 and it's almost an orange yellow anyway and I'm just gonna try not to colour right over the top of that orange but uh, but make so that it, you can still see it a little bit, but it is going to sort of fade back, obviously. And hopefully that makes them look slightly more vibrant. Now, the only problem with this now is that we can't really, we don't really get the impression it's glass. So I'm going to show you how I make things look more glassy. I'm going to take my gel pen, um, hang on, got to find the right one. I'm actually going to use my really skinny one. Oh, sorry. That was a bit of a funny noise, wasn't it? I'm just going to scribble it. Now this is um, my Sakura Jelly Roll. This is number five, so it's a very fine tip. You can't really tell actually in the camera. But what I'm going to do is just run it across the windows with some lines, if I can get it to work. There we go. Hopefully you can see and it just gives the impression there's a bit of a shine on the glass. It does show up more if you do a grey window rather than a yellow window, but it gives you a little um, idea anyway. So there's that one. Now the main building. Now I'm thinking I want a quite a muted colour building and Stedler doesn't really do muted very much. So we're going to have to do a very light layer of colour. Oh, I can't get hold of my brown. And I'm going to start with number 76, which is the, I'll just move my, my books in the way, which is the, one of the darker browns, but I want to apply it really gently. So a couple of tips, hold it far up on its edge and take really light strokes try to just massage the paper with the pencil don't go in too hard and you'll get a light layer 
and you get a nice little noise as we gently colour it. I like this sort of tower. Now this building is rounded and you see the roof it's sort of I think it's like a turret or a tower almost so we're going to try and give that impression of roundness later but I'm going to just give a base colour to the whole of the building in this light muted colour. I know um, a lot of people do this page with really um, with lots of pastel colour houses all different colours or bright colours different colours it's lovely but I just fancied doing something quite muted I don't know why I don't around here we don't have lots of brightly coloured painted houses and that doesn't mean to say I can't do it like that but I just I've been looking around at houses when I've been out and about I don't know if you've been doing the same thing to get ideas now here when the Cotswolds it's limestone very pretty but there isn't really a colour for it you know it's like sort of a wheat colour or something and uh, it doesn't really show up either so I can't really do we also have a red brick houses so the tower we're going to try and make it curved so what we need to do is to make it a bit darker on this edge I'm still trying to build up very gently and then a little bit darker in so just gently pull those colors in and then the same here find that does because you've got the illusion of shadow on both sides it makes it look like the light is catching the center and that gives more of an illusion that it's round I don't know if you can pick that up and the darker you do it the more of a contrast you get between the light center and the dark edges and the more rounded it will become and it's just a matter of, I don't want it really dark, so it's just a matter of building up the layers gently until you get the impression that you want. I'm going to leave it there. I really don't want it very dark. You might want to go on and do more. Now, between here and here, I feel there would be a little bit of shadow. So I'm going to put a little layer here. I've got this bit that Johanna's drawn in. I'm just going to do that too. And on this side too. So a little layer here and this bit. Now I'm thinking maybe under the roof there will be some shadow too. I'm going to try and draw that in at a very strange angle. It's lucky you can't see me. You would wonder what on earth I was doing. Uh, oh. oh, so sorry. My telephone has a habit of ringing, doesn't it? So I was doing um, the line under the roof, I think. Now I'm thinking we really ought to do one under here as well. But what we've got to remember about this one is it's a rounded building and we've got this darker bit here. So we do it a little bit darker here and lighter in the middle and then darker here and lighter here. And it's only a little bit. You can probably barely see it. And we need to do a bit under here as well. Now on this one I'm not going to vary the pressure. I'm just going to do a line through. Oh I know what I was going to do. Under the window sills. Just a little shadow. Now I think they might be the same colour as the house. So I'm just going to lightly colour them in. We will do the door a different colour, don't worry, it's not all going to be the same. I'm going to do this chimney pot the same colour because often um, houses will have the chimney rendered in the same colour. And this bit. Now this needs to be round, so like the round tower, I'm just going to put a little, some extra strokes of colour on each side just to give a slight impression of a curve. And that one is just going to be really light. And a little bit darker each end. Okay, the front door. Now, we need a sort of... I don't want to go away from our earthy palette, but I do want a different colour. So I'm thinking I'm going to go for green. And this more earthy coloured green, this is the number 57. Sorry, that's very blurred. And... Uh, 
I'm just going to do a little, um, just a coating of it, a layer, sorry it's the right word, coating, it's paint isn't it? Anyway, a gentle layer and then think about where it might be darker. I think I want it all to be a little bit darker so it stands out. And we've got the handle, which what I'm going to do, hmm, I wonder what, what would it be? Would it, I don't, doors don't have round handles like that, do they really? I'm trying to think, would you paint it the same colour as the door? I think you would. I'm going to do it like that. And what I'm going to do is grab my brown, which is, um, again, the number 76. Sorry, you can't see that. And do a little bit of shadow. I've just realised how much white there is above this building in the camera here, sorry, I can't, I can move it up a little bit, my tripod's in the way, there we go, and uh, that's me, I'm done with that house, we do have the lamp post, but I'm going to do that lamp post with that house, um, not this house, I think it matches that one, I don't know why, I just do, but that's so, uh, so that's that, so um, there we go, um, thank you for watching, sorry I can't think of what to say, I'm blaring on, um, <laughs> So thank you for watching. Oops, I hope you enjoyed the video and happy colouring.